Namashaya Namaha. All right. So, welcome to this course on Jyotish and Yogic Philosophy. This is going to be a real quick, uh, just introductory kind of like breakdown um, at a like a macro view of you know what we're trying to accomplish in this course and what Vedic astrology is all about. So components of Jyotisha, here's like the main seven components. So Jyotish, to begin with, Jyotish is Jo, jo or Jyoti means light, Ish means God, like, or Lord. Like the word Ishvara is the word that's used in the Yoga Sutras to refer to God, or uh, Ganesh, or as, you know, or Mahesh. So Esh means Lord, Jyoti means light, the light of the Lord, the light of God. That's what Jyotish is. Jyotish is also astronomy and astrology, because in ancient India they were the same thing. So, um... They're, they're the same thing. And then Deva Prajna is actually what you call it when you go to get a reading done. Deva, gods, Prajna, questioning, consulting. So consulting the gods. When you go get a reading, that's what's happening. But you and I, what we're doing, we're studying, talking about astrology, that's Jyotish. Okay. So in Jyotish, a lot of you guys are coming from either no background of astrology or a somewhat of a background of Western astrology or somewhat of a background of Vedic astrology but in a less you know formal way so right off the bat with this course it's if you've ever heard the saying you need to empty your cup of tea before you can taste mine that's what I want you guys to do here so you must first empty your cup before you can taste my tea it's actually to put it in an Indian way there's a story about a sitar player sitar teacher, rather. An Indian student goes to learn sitar from the teacher, and they, and you know, this guy knows nothing about sitar. So he says, okay, I'll charge you 50 rupees a day to learn from me. And then a week later, a guy comes by and he's like, okay, I've been playing sitar for several years now and I wanna learn from you. He's like, okay, well, I'm charging you 500 rupees a day. And then later he finds out that this other guy who just started is only being charged 50 rupees a day. And he complains, he's like, dude, I've been studying for years. How come you're charging me more than you're charging him? The sitar guru says, well, I have to charge you more because I have to make sure that you unlearn everything you think you learned over the last three years. And that's a lot more work for me to do. So it costs more for me to teach you than to teach this person whose mind is empty and clear and hasn't had it filled up with all these wrong ideas I need to make them unlearn. So <laughs> that's what I'm going for here. And if you're now paying for astrology, you're not just getting random YouTube cookbook stuff. So empty your cup before you can fully taste the tea of Jyotish, let's say. Okay, so moving on, charts. We have, we have a, a different style of charts. We have the North Indian and the South Indian. And we, and I've done videos on that. You're gonna get to those. and. So the round wheel idea of Western, you're not gonna see a round chart wheel in Vedic, though you can calculate it like that if you, if that's more familiar to you, but it should be known that even the modern uh, Western round wheel style is actually not what the old Western charts looked like. The old Western charts looked like a lot like ours. Um, we also have special lagnas in our charts, and charts are called kundali or kundali sometimes, which means wheel. And our charts, we have special lagnas. Uh, we have the, there are these special time-based lagnas, the Bhava lagna, the Gatika lagna, and then we even have the Pada, Upapada. Even the seventh house is kind of like a lagna in a sense. Lagna is the ascendant, by the way, um, the Sanskrit word for the ascendant. Signs, um, Rashis, we call them Rashis. We're gonna do, we've got many videos on Rashis. The signs, a lot of this stuff will overlap from the signs that you may have learned from other systems, but we have special aspects. We have Rashi aspects in Vedic astrology where signs actually always aspect each other. And then we have unique classifications such as Day Strong, uh, you know, uh, Brahmin, Warrior Caste, or Kshatriya, or Sudra, or Servant, or Back Rising, Sattva, Rajas, etc. 
Then we have houses. We have a ton of specialized house-based techniques in Vedic astrology. And in Vedic, it's called bhava. And that means like, ba means existence. And va means the state of it. So the state of existence. Like the 12 bhavas are like the 12 different states of existence. And that's actually very, kind of a very similar term to the Greek uh, word where, um, actually no, we're not gonna go into all that Greek stuff right now. I, sorry, too, distra too much of a distraction. Um, but just know that houses, Indian tradition of astrology has just really taken, ho taken house placements and yogas and reading house to house or bhavat bhavam, what we call it taken it to such an extreme level it's profound vargas these are pretty much entirely lost in the western tradition except western astrology still has the drekana or the d3 or the decanates but actually in ancient medieval and western and greek astrology they had vargas and so this has been almost lost in other traditions but the vedic tradition has carried on and then we have nakshatras which are the vedic stars of the moon the lunar mansions now these are just totally unique and they're not found in any other tradition. And then we use these nakshatras to create dashas or timing systems, which are of course totally unique. But then there are other dashas that are not even based on nakshatras and they're sign based or other things totally unique. So there's just a lot of stuff that is in the Jyotish world that you guys are gonna have a lot of fun with. And it's like you don't even know what you don't know. You know, you don't even know all these things that are waiting to be discovered. And then there's so many subcomponents within these things, like Varsha Fall, the yearly solar returns. We're going to get into that. Ashtaka Varga, we're going to get into that. If you've taken the financial course, we've already covered a lot of that. Rashi Dashas, Nakshatra Dashas, Naisargika Karakas, Chara Karakas, Karakas in general, Atma Karaka, you know. Uh, all the different karakas, uh, Rahu and Ketu based techniques, um, you know, Bhava yogas, reading the 144 Bhava yogas of Parashara, then there's all the other yogas like Ashraya yogas or character based yogas like Mahapurusha yogas, then there's of course Avashtas, there's five sets of Avashtas. Uh, we don't even know what to do with all these Avastas still. We're still just figuring out this profound realm of psychological healing, the Avastas. And there's Shadbala, the six strengths of the planets. So many things. And that's just some stuff I randomly wrote down. There's still so much more. And then there's this, the other cool thing I want to say right with you guys starting off too is that in just this intro video, the, the more you get good at Vedic astrology or astrology in general, then when you go and learn other fields, you just plug that into these other fields and you get really, really good at those fields too. Like what I went and did with financial astrology and markets. I just took all this info and plugged it into the financial context and did far better than people who have done like the, basically everything else in the realm of financial market stuff, but not done astrology. I like immediately was able to get to their level within like six months, you know? So that's pretty absurd, but you can do that with all these things. So. Um, and you know, the more you learn about any of these fields specifically, the better of an astrologer you're going to be, which is why I'm going to teach about some of these things just a little bit here and there too. Sanskrit, yogic meditation, Kriya Yoga, all sorts of just yogic procedures. Vastu, which is like the Feng Shui, what Feng Shui came from, the ancient Indian science of space and designing your dwelling space. Ayurveda psychology, astronomy, mythology, all forms of therapy, naturopathy, homeopathy. The more you get good at all these things, the more they'll plug into this and the more this will plug into that and blend and layer itself and you'll just be a better counselor. Which is, and again, this is why I'm not just trying to teach just Jyotish techniques, but teach like overall all the wisdom I've learned that can help you to be a better guy. All right, cool. So hope that's a good, helpful introduction video to this course and its aim. Thanks, you guys.